In today's video, and for one night only, I'm sharing my table and a nice cozy cup of tea with my dearest and oldest friend, Lauren. You ready? The longest time. <laughs> for the longest time. <laughs> dearest and oldest friend, Lauren. So if that sounds like just your cozy cup of tea, get comfy and let's dive in. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Wool Needles Hands Knitting Podcast. My name is Taylor, and I am your host. And for today, we also have my dear friend, Lauren. Say hello. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me, Taylor. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, I'm excited for you to be here. We are spending the weekend together. Well, I'm home, but Lauren came to town. She's from California. She flew in to visit just her, which is amazing. And we're just hanging out and knitting and enjoying our time together. And you're enjoying time away from work and kids. Yeah. And it's really cool. And so I needed to have her on the podcast. This is this is a first. If you are a viewer of the podcast, you know that I'm a solo show typically, but it is so cool to have Lauren here because she's also a knitter. In fact, I almost feel like it was you who started knitting like all those years ago. And then that was what got me into knitting. So in, my husband and then you are somewhat to blame for. Yeah, I had known how to crochet from pretty early on, but just mm -hmm. did basic little things. And then when you got into knitting, it felt like something natural to try to get into as well. So I think yeah. we inspired each other to yeah. get into these fiber crafts. Yeah, totally. And here we are, and we're surrounded by a mess of, of knits. And I have, like, project bags hanging from my chair. It was kind of a, a circus trying to get all this set up because I'm so used to just having to make room for one person. But it is so cool to have company. This is really, this is really awesome. I think what we're going to do in terms of the format of this episode is I have some things I want to share with you. I finished something. I have some new yarn that I purchased and it's this big pile over here and I have a reason for that and I'm kind of excited to share that. I want to share it with you too because yeah, it's this cute, it. it's a sweater I found on Pinterest and I want to try and like dupe it. Um, I have some updates on the Franken sweater and the little black tea. But Lauren, you brought a stack of knits. I show did. This, show this knit stuff. Yeah. There's, um, I watched your recent episode. These are not things that I knit in 2023. Well, that's fine. In fact, I think I that's probably fine. knit nothing in 2023. That's I've had a little fine. hiatus. <laughs> so um, these are just old things, things that I was kind of excited about and things that I like to wear. This one's like a little hat. Oh, there we go with hearts on it. Um, really cozy. This one, I this is your yarn. This is cactus flower. Cactus flower. I believe. That's a fiber for the people original. That was the first colorway I ever dyed. Yes. And probably around the time that I bought that yarn. Um, and you know these. I had to yes. bring these because the weather is cold out. These are the, um, we're having to do this thing where like my face is. Yeah. <laughs> Um, these are the fire pit mitts. You have the long... Here, throw them on your arms. Uh, yeah, I'm going to put them on. That way it's easier to see. Can I wear one? Yeah. Do a little high five. Fire pit mitt high five. I love them because I can put them on over a shirt or it's... over a sweater. Uh -huh. And they're just so cozy. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I That's one of the things I like about them. So when I design these, I have... There's like a little part right here where you increase mm -hmm. to kind of give you some width here to throw them over like a long sleeve shirt. Yeah. Nice job on these. And I like how it rolls because it's mm -hmm. actually really comfy to hold. Mm -hmm. And it curls away from your finger so you can eat or like hold something that you don't want a bunch of fabric or knit things anywhere too close. Those it just nice. feels so cozy. I'm flattered. I, I, I didn't, I didn't, They're didn't one of my favorite knits. <laughs> my favorites i love them so much they look really good. I, I don't know it gets cold and i don't always want to put on layers of jackets yeah. because it, it we don't need that in california yeah and sometimes you just need a good heavy long sleeve shirt or light sweater and then just something a little extra to go on top um so that's probably one of my oldest knits and then... What is the yarn that you knit these with? Do you remember? I think it's probably... Is this fisherman's wool? It has that same coloring of the fisherman's wool in that, like, nature's brown colorway. I'm trying to get it to focus here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> can we, like, extend it across both of our faces mm -hmm. there? Yeah, it kind of has that nature's brown look. I, I don't know. I can't tell, really, to be honest. 
but they're really pretty. Did you ever watch or read the book Outlander? Watch no. the show. Yeah. So these have always given me like Outlander vibes because she's in the Scottish like Highlands and she wears these knit sleeves. Okay. All right. So it's. I can see that. Yeah, yeah. Well, good. I'm glad. And then my final thing. When you first started dyeing yarn. Wait, hold on. (laughs) We dyed yarn together and you let me find a color and we did this on your kitchen stove. I have. I have that yarn. Hold on. (laughs) So there's an air mattress back here because Lauren is This is my bedroom (laughs) for this weekend. (laughs) Okay, yeah. So she's sleeping in wool needles headquarters. This is the one I did. Okay. I have that picture. So this is a lovely little triangle shawl that, that I so knit cute. up with that yarn. And I, you like told me to name the yarn. I think I named it Flamingo. I don't know. Cause it just has this kind of pinky salmon-y like color to it. It's very um, tonal. Like I remember, so the way that it's here, hold it up so it covers both of our faces. So you can kind of see how it has that like tonal look to it. It's not all completely solid, but it's so pretty the way that it looks. It looks like you intentionally marbled it almost. Mm-hmm. What a pretty color. So yeah, I would say that this is one of my favorite knits because not only did I help dye the yarn, but I had a really fun time. Yes, I guess up. And again, I can just you know, like do like one of these little things so cute and it's just a cute little add-on to like a simple sweater look at how it makes like your outfit we have a screen here so we can kind of see but so cute it's like bandanas i did that whole episode we were talking about bandanas did you ever watch that? yeah yeah um this is like the perfect size and i like that it has like the detail in Mm -hmm. it and then the coloring is pretty um simple so it's not too confusing with other things you might be wearing this is the one i did so do you cool. remember when we did the, it was like both of I us do. did like a red yeah. color? I don't even know what that is. So this, I guess this isn't my first. It's not my first no. yarn. Um, <laughs> so mm-hmm. silly. But yeah, it's just an orange color. But yeah, I dyed this. One of my first, you know, skeins of yarn dyed with you. And that's yeah. really cool. Yeah. I remember you showing that to me. <laughs> I'm so glad you brought that yeah. because it's so pretty. Very yeah. cool. I'll pop that picture up so you can see it. And I think we were... Standing, it was that little kitchen in the apartment. Mm-hmm. I started dyeing yarn in a garage of our apartment before we had our second, and everything was like really small. And at this time, I was practicing a lot of dyeing in the kitchen. So cool! I like it. That's what I brought. What are you working on right now? Right now is another um, kind of travel through time to some of your yarn. <laughs> that is back from 2018 so this one is definitely a different style um it has like the gold stellina in it Mm -hmm. so we've got a little bit of shimmer and i have loved this yarn what was it called punk punk rock punk Punk music music made made me me do do it it. (laughs) (laughs) and we growing up i mean it was you know newfound glory all of those like bands were so I, i loved them i wanted i saw them in concert um so this was definitely a yarn color and name that like spoke to me and then i love that it's like these cute little pinks but in here with these kind of green tones um so it's like natural colors mixed in there and then the little gold flecks so i have always had that yarn and like wanted to create something really special with it um but I didn't want anything too complicated. So this is going to be a hat and it has like a little um, lace pattern just on one section. What's the name um, of it? Do you know? It, yeah, it is called, let's see, I can bust out my pattern pop a picture here. up there. This is called the Cloud Burst Hat. Is this, this is a free pattern, It's right? a free pattern on Ravelry. And... Yeah, it's just a really simple. Is it called the cloud burst hat or the cloud butts hat? Like I just. Oh no, into... burst! <laughs> I couldn't find cloud, cloud butts. butts. Would be kind of fun too, but no, this is the cloud burst. Okay, hat. cloud burst. I don't. There it is. Super cute. So I have the picture here. I'm gonna pop it up. So you think picture. that's gonna look great with these colors, and it's gonna have just enough detail to not be a super simple basic vanilla hat. Um. And my daughter, I think, is going to want one, too, which is going to be fun because this hat here I actually did as a mother-daughter 
um, duo too. So I made mine and then I made one for her as well in a matching pattern. Um, so I had a like mommy and me knit hat thing. Can I see that one? This one, I feel like I've, what is this one? Do you remember the name of the pattern? I would have to look it up. I this is so pretty. One. I think you might have given me that pattern. I'm not oh, sure. You did a great job. Thank you. I, I loved like, working oh, what that. What is this? No, I did knit one of these, I think. I recognize this pattern. There you go. Spring hat. No, no, that's not the same. Is that it? No, it's a little different, I think. Exploring in the woods? Yes. That's it? Yeah, yes, exploring yes. in the woods. Okay. Yeah, I remember making that hat. That's a beautiful, like a nice slouched, a slouch, slouchy, mm -hmm. a slouchy lace toque, toque. It's so cute. And it looks adorable on my daughter. I have a seven-year-old daughter, nine-year-old son. So they're a third generation of friends in our family. Yeah. So that, that they're um, very good friends. They love Carried each other. over this yarn. <laughs> what a throwback. <laughs> so I haven't been dyeing variegated colors. Um, I've kind of been just dyeing uh, solid colors. But I look back at these and it's so fun. Especially the gold Stellina yarn. So cool. Nice. Lovely. Thank you. You're welcome. What are you working on? Okay, well, I actually, I finished something. I finished a pair of socks. So last time we met, I was showing you that I was working on a pair of socks with some little lion head knits yarn. And I finished those socks and I have been wearing them uh, a lot. I'm doing this so that it covers both of our faces. So this one's finished. We got two socks. They're super comfy and cozy. I've been wearing them constantly and you can see that because they're kind of dingy on the bottom. I'm sorry. Like, and I did not block them and I kind of don't think I'm going to. I, last time I blocked a pair of socks, this like part of the sock got really loosey goosey because I was blocking it on these blocking uh, sock blockers. And I just feel like they need to invent some kind of sock blocker where you have the foot and then this portion of the ankle, but then everything else narrows out so that you're not pulling this part, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, because you need that to stay You nice need that to get snug so around your ankle. Keeps the sock up. Yeah. So I didn't block them this time, but I've been wearing them and I feel like that gets all the stitches lined up and they're socks. Like, I don't know. You don't need to block socks. The, I'm a firm believer in blocking things. I will always recommend blocking um, but there are just some items like socks where it's not really all that necessary. So these are finished. Thankfully they're finished and I love them. Do you know, I think I'm going to put them on because my, my feet are cold <laughs> and I really, I've been wearing them a lot. The tweed yarn for socks. I don't know if it's my favorite. So if you get in there, I'm going to kind of do it so you can see like a cross section. You really, the tweeds really stick out. Like they're really just all over the place. And when you look down at your feet, it kind of looks like you have just things stuck to your feet. And I mean, I get the tweed aesthetic, but sorry, I just shook the camera. <laughs> wow. Um, but I don't know if I love the tweed yarn for socks, but they're cute. Oh, and they're toasty. Very toasty. So socks are finished. That's good. Um, okay. I have, I don't want to talk about that right now. This is... My Frank, you want to hold that? Yeah. Thank you. This is my Franken sweater. So as you know, I am working on a second Franken sweater. I feel like y'all know how this is going down. And this is where we are with it so far. So last time we met, I had finished one whole sleeve and I was just about to start on the second sleeve. Well, I have that one whole sleeve finished. You see that there? And I started a little bit of the second sleeve and then I decided I wanted to carry on with the body instead because I wanted, I'm working through this in the knit along over on the Patreon. Everyone knows if you want to learn more, check out the description below. There is a knit along going on. This is the front. It's so soft. Isn't it soft? Yeah. I love that. It's, um, so the yarn is this. So this is Peyton's Classic Wool Worsted. You can get this at Joanne. Oh, it's yeah. like, I, I don't know, like maybe $8 a ball. And then the mohair is um, fiber for the people mohair. And just a really, but it's so together. Oh, it's like butter. Hold on. You see that? Can you see the butter? It's so soft. Okay. That's cringy. <laughs> Here we are. This is how I try on sweaters that haven't been fully knit yet. I do this thing where I like hold it up to my chest and then I put an arm out like this. 
Yeah, so this is where we are with it so far. So I've knit some of the body. And the reason I'm doing the body and not carrying on with the second sleeve is because I want to figure out the shaping I'm going to do here. A lot of folks in the knit along that are knitting this sweater, one of the questions that they had was, okay, so a fit issue that some people run into is that their bust is smaller than their belly area, right? So they, they're like a pear shape and sweaters like this, sometimes it's like, it's big. Up, what is it? What is that? That it's too big up here, mm -hmm. but then it becomes tighter down here. And so they're trying to figure out ways that they can adjust the shaping of the body to kind of mitigate those issues. And some, one of the things that came up was doing a more like a line fit. Um, but a lot of folks who were kind of falling into this category were thinking about doing a split hem. And that's where you just have kind oh, of like a deep kinda... split of mm -hmm. the side. Yeah. And I'm trying to decide if I want to do something like that with this sweater because it's a nice wide sweater. It's back there on the mannequin right there. That's the same sweater. You that would that? look really cute. Yeah. So because it's so wide, doing like a nice split hem up the side, kind of like the Oon sweater that I've shared before. I'll pop a picture of that sweater up and you can kind of see where, where I'm going with that. But I'm trying to decide what to do. Um, but it would be cute. Well, if you already have one like that, it kind of like gives you a reason right, to make right. it different, make it its own sweater. If you're kind yes. of doing a knit as you go. Well, and that's the thing. It's like a whole thing about this knit along and kind of this season of the podcast is modification. We're talking mm -hmm. a lot about modification and I want in the pattern as I write it, I want to be able to mention like pointers on how you could adjust the body and the shaping right. to accommodate different body shapes. And I feel like if I could knit a sample with that split up the side, that it'd be nice to show like other ways that you can knit the body of the sweater. So that's where I'm at right now. I'm working away on the body portion and I would like to have the next video in that series over on Patreon comes out Tuesday. So I want to, while you're here, that's what I want very to do. You can keep me knitting. honest. Oh, very, we're... very busy knitting. Very busy knitting. And you can make sure that I stay focused on that because I'll otherwise be busy bubble bumblebeeing around all my projects. <laughs> I don't know. So that's a Franken sweater. Love that. Yeah. And then the only other thing that I really have that I shared a little bit with you guys you know what? I don't know if I shared any of this. I had mentioned that I'm going to be working the little black t-shirt that I have. I'll pop a picture up so you know what I'm talking about um, into a pattern to share with everyone. And so I'm working on a sample right now. Yeah, we did talk about this on one of the previous episodes because I had, yeah, you can see that. So have you ever seen the original, the black one that I knit? Yes. It's just like a little cap t-shirt. And it's t -shirt. so cute. It really inspired me because I always think about knits as being sweaters and not as totally. a t-shirt. Totally. 100%. And I just way. really did love the idea of that because it can look dressy but also casual at the same time. Um, so I think that might be somewhere that I'm heading next. You should. And I really like the weight of this. This it is... It feels like it would be really comfortable. Um... And it looks durable too. Like it doesn't look like something that's going to pill up too bad. No. And I've worn the black one so many times. I should go grab it and show it to you. But this yarn is what I'm using for this. Um, this is, I've talked about this before. This is by the company About Strings. It's a yarn that you can buy on Amazon. And it comes in these small little donuts. Um, and they're so nice. It's a cotton merino blend. And I'll tell you the breakdown. I always forget. I, want, I always want to say 50-50, but it's a 55% extra fine merino and 45% cotton DK weight. And it is lovely. I will link to this down below, but they're so nice and they come in really good colors. Um, and it's just this like, pattern from you. I will let you test it. <laughs> tell you what, you can test it for me. That would be awesome. I'm kind of writing it up as I go. I could even give you what I'm doing as I'm doing it. And you can help me test it. Right. I'm hoping to turn this into like a knit along over on Patreon where some other folks can work on it once the pattern uh, gets worked up. Let me go get the, um, let me go get the other sample. Okay. Squeeze my way out of here. You can so see. this is your design? Yes. I love these little details in the shoulder. That's so oh, cute. Thank you. I, um, hold on, I'll be right back and I'll talk yeah. to you. Yeah. So this is the original one. Oh, that's so cute. Isn't that cool? Yeah, I love that. It's it's heavy a little bit, mm -hmm. but it'd be nice on like, I mean, this is black, but 
on like a spring day if you yes. had it in kind of like a neutral color like I don't know almost like a copper or like a tan Ooh, copper would be really cool just Super to cute. wear and it would look dressy with some jeans but it also has like, like a casual a vibe too because of that cotton in there. I'm mm -hmm. gonna throw this over my head just because I want to see how this. Um, yeah, I might want to try this on later. Oh, look at look at the way that you can. Oh, that's so pretty. You should try it on. Yeah, like over my sweater right now. Well, no, like go try it on, and come back. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's gonna be cool the way that the stripes. So the thing about the stripes. Last time I mentioned um, this, I was talking about not having enough of the gray and that I was going to need to buy some more, mm -hmm. but they only come in sets of four and I didn't want to have to buy a whole nother like set of four. And so I'm using the leftover from this to create the stripes and it's working out really well. Yeah. The stripes are cool. So they kind of help me balance the yarn. Cause I'm otherwise I wouldn't have had enough. What were so we're the stripes going all the way down. This yeah. Way? I'm going to do, so I'm thinking a couple of things. So I'm thinking I want to do the stripes all the, not all the way down. I want to stop to where the end of the sweater. So like the mm -hmm. bottom hem of the sweater would have about as much gray as I have here. I so see. it kind of balances it. And then the sleeves on this version are going to be longer. I want the sleeves on this to kind of almost get like two thirds of the way down to your elbow. And then that way I'll put stripes on those too. Okay. So this will have just a little bit longer sleeves. How but, cute. Yeah. Super cute. And I, um, I'm really enjoying the gray and I just love this yarn. It's so nice to work with because it has merino in there. There's some resiliency. So it's not like you're knitting with straight cotton, um, but it's just a really good quality yarn. And I've worn that several times. Um, so, oh, you know what? On the last episode, when I did share this, a few people were asking about how it washes and if I have washed it yet. I have not washed this yet. I have worn it several times and I've not washed it, but I haven't done anything crazy strenuous where I would have like gotten gross in it. Um, but when I do wash this, I'll wash it like I would any piece of knitwear, hand wash it and then lay it back out to dry. I wouldn't put it in the washing machine because the merino that's in here is, um, is untreated. So the merino could still felt. So you have to be kind of careful with that, but yeah, I love it. So that, um, that right there, along the raglan yeah it looks like that because that's a pearl bump as opposed uh, to a knit bump so it kind of like goes in it creates I was thinking of like um I don't know like I really wanted the raglan to stand out do yeah. you remember those like ringer tees those like little t-shirts that were supposed to have that 70s vibe with oh, the rings yes. around? Uh -huh. yeah. I kind of wanted like the neckline to have that look and in the longer sleeves on this one I'm gonna have kind of like that I see so yeah. well it kind of reminds me of like the detail that is in the Felix pullover too, like with the little holes. The holes, the little eyelets, yeah. Along there, because that's the one sweater that I have finished for myself. Wait, did you bring that? I didn't. No, oh, no. I know. I wish I did, but I did not. Do um, you have a picture of it on your phone? I probably do. I'm sure I do. And I know you took pictures of it that one time. Let's just put those uh, details up. In the light. Is it the one that you did in that colorway titanium? titanium? I have a picture of that. Yes. Yes. I get so many compliments on that sweater. It's and so pretty. The colors of the yarn are gorgeous. The sweater is just very easy to wear. Yeah. Really just nice and kind of loose and comfy I love, and cozy. I have how many? I've knit four Felix sweaters now. Yeah. I love that pattern. I talk about it all the time. I'm kind of a... It's a fun knit. It's fast. It is. It's it really fast. It knits up really fast. Yeah. Unlike my other fingering weight sweater that <laughs> remains to be a project. And I almost brought it. Is it the flax? It, yes. The flax light. It's the flax light. And it's really pretty. I had used some leftover yarn um, in like a variegated color, something like this. And then it has like an aqua blue. And I made my own stripe pattern kind of flowing from one gradient into the Very other cool. yeah, and yeah, so yeah. then the bottom is going to be this blue and um i just said not not today <laughs> not today sweater not today sweater not today i have yet to even knit a fingering weight sweater i um and i know a lot of viewers are fans of fingering weight sweaters and they mentioned that it's just easier to throw it on it's not bulky it, it's it really good for like in between seasons and i totally get that and i feel like I need to explore, like even maybe a sport weight. Yeah. 
something a little bit I know more. I will love this sweater once I have it. You will. Because the feeling of it... It's so nice. It, it's cute. And I, you know, I can slip it on and I can put my arms I can that. put my arms in it. that don't <laughs> go anywhere. I think that when you can try a sweater on and like, like you said, like actually put <laughs> your arms, arms through, through. The holes, you feel like, oh my God, I made something yes. that I can put my limbs in. Yes. And then it makes you want to finish it. It's like with these, like the, uh, the Franken sweater, I can like put it on. And when you put it on, even though it's like only one sleeve and it's one of those weird crop top sweaters. Uh -huh. It's like still, it feels like a big grown up sweater. Super accomplishment. Yeah. yeah, I know. Okay, so I was, um, I wasn't frivolous. I feel like there was intention here, but I purchased a bunch of yarn. Like, ugh, you guys, you need listen. a hand or a two. Yeah, here. It's so weird. I'm like, I pull it over here, like, <laughs> and then when I see it on the camera, it's like, okay, here. This is, um, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so this is really pretty yarn. And I found this yarn because the first thing I found was this really adorable sweater on Pinterest that was not linked to any pattern, but it was just really adorable. And I wanted to figure out a way to like dupe the sweater. And the sweater was knit. Here, you can sit it right okay. here. You don't have to hold it. Yeah. Um, yeah, because was... I want to check it out. Okay. So let me see if I can find it. Go ahead and tell, tell the folks what that is. All right. So it's Debbie Bliss. What is this? Don Donegal Donegal mm -hmm. Donegal luxury tweed Aaron Waite. Right. Okay, here it is. So Aaron Waite wool. Aaron Waite is like a it's worsted. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's considered a heavier worsted. And then this is in the pebble color. Yeah, it's so pretty. It's just gray, but it has like pops of little like primary colors. I know in it. this. I this honestly reminds me of like a classroom chalkboard. Okay, so let's show them. Let's show the people okay. what this looks like. If we both hold one up in front of our face. Look how pretty that is. Yeah, th you're so right. It looks like a classroom chalkboard that like kids have been chalking it up with like multiple colored yes. chalks. You're so right. So cute. So this I purchased from Lovecrafts and it comes from the UK, I guess. I did not realize that it came all the way from across the pond. Um, and it did not take very long to get to me, but it was the only place I could find a yarn that looked just like this, which happened to look just like the sweater I was um, going for, which is now that one has a pattern and that's not the one I'm looking for. This one. It was the closest I could get. So do you see this? Oh, yeah. I'm going to put my brain Now I can up. totally see where you found the inspiration for well, doing this. Two different things. So I love this sweater. I'm going to pop it up so you can see what I'm showing Lauren. But I love that color. Mm -hmm. So do you see? And then pop this one up too. That's actually really cute too. This one is a pattern. And I like that neckline. It's there. rolled. It's pretty. Yeah. So I love that. I don't like the way it looks on a hanger. Whenever I see sweaters like this hung on a hanger, like the one you're seeing here, it just kind of makes me cringe because of the way it's like pulling on the right. shoulders. I don't love that. But isn't that pretty? That's really pretty. Yeah. So I was thinking it would be fun to kind of try to dupe a sweater like what you're seeing here. Right. Um, and then this yarn would be what I use. That's my plan. I have no idea. What, well, no, I do have an idea of when I'd like to start. Once I'm finished with the t-shirt um, pattern and the Franken sweater's finished, I would kind of like to try this. It's really lovely. It's really nice. These skeins are 50 gram skeins. Yeah, one hundred percent wool. Debbie nice Bliss, yards. made in Ireland, and distributed by Lovecrafts. Yeah, I love this. I'll link to this yarn down below. I'm not sponsored by Debbie Bliss or Lovecrafts or anything like that, but it's just a really pretty yarn. And you guys can let me know what you think if you think it'd be fun to dupe a sweater like that. I have thought before about like pattern dupes. And I know that we've talked a little bit about that before here on the channel, uh, or I've had some tips sent to me over at the tip line of talking about patterns that could be dupes of other like mainstream commercial uh, items that you can buy. Do you hear the wind shine? I do. <laughs> <laughs> How nice. We have our windows open right now. Isn't yeah. that the fun thing about once you do start getting more and more comfortable with knitting is finding a pattern that you like Yes. And then saying, okay, well, I really like that, but it's missing a little something. Mm -hmm. Like looking at one of those sweaters, I was just thinking like, oh, on the bottom, like if you had like a little bit of like a lace, like open yes. holes, 
just add a little bit of an interest area there. And you can do that. You can just add that in and make your piece your own. You're so right. That's like, it's what we've been talking about a lot here the last several videos. And it's really true. And I think that you only start thinking that way when you start like knitting seriously. And Mm -hmm. then you also... Um, what do they say? Like not desperation breeds ingenuity or something. I don't know. Something like you can't find what you're looking for. And so you just create what you're looking for. And I think that's where a lot of designs come from. It's like, like this, for example, there's elements of this that were born of just wanting a knit t-shirt that had whatever certain elements to it. Yeah. I, I think that that's, what's fun. Or like finding a sweater that you buy in the store and wanting to figure out how to put your, like make it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. You want to chat about anything else? Um, well, have you seen any patterns that you want to knit? Oh my gosh. There is uh, that one. So if I can get this sweater done, I would love, do you remember when we went to the knitting, um, and I'm looking it up as you yeah, the so. convention, um, where was that? That was in... I remember every time um, we've gone to... San Jose. Yes, we went to yeah. Stitches West. Yes. I think and I had pictures. took a class there, and it was so much fun. You took that class on your own. That was so cute. Like it We both adorable. separated and yes. like, took our own little classes. And I had a girl in my class that was blind. Do you remember that? Yeah, and she was right. knitting away and like had dropped stitches that she was picking up. And oh, I was so inspired by her because I'm thinking, I... And just like learning how to do this too, mm-hmm. but she was she was amazing. Um, but I remember there was a sweater on display there, and I always forget the name of it. It's something. Was it honey? Oh, honey and hive or like wool and honey? Know, wool and honey. Yes, it's an Andrea Mauer and gosh, <laughs> I would love to make it. Yes. Oh my gosh, I'm obsessed. Wool and honey by Andrea Mowry. I have yet to knit an Andrea Mowry design. I and you that has been it. on my brain. Ever since that time. So I don't see any problem in Lauren just like putting her other project on the back burner and casting <laughs> on a wool and honey. You guys, this is a, what size is the yarn? What weight? It's a, fi- it's a fingering weight. Fingering. No, I really think, okay. But I mean, would you not just love. Yes, it's beautiful. Having that in your wardrobe. Okay, those of you that have made a wool and honey, comment down below. <laughs> what are your thoughts? Lauren needs to know. And she needs the motivation to knit a wool and honey because this is so true. Like you, and look at that cool, like it honeycomb like, design. Yeah. And it just melts away. Mm, that's, so I pretty. love that it's kind of asymmetric in mm-hmm. the design there. Lauren, that's really pretty. So I think that, you know, I know that that's going to have some complexity of doing that design on there, but I think it's, it would be something that you're very like, <laughs> um, but yeah. No, you can totally handle it. It's I'm sure I can do it. Oh, no, 100% you can do it. But I also don't think it would even be that difficult for you. It says, this sweater is inspired by some of my favorite things. Wool and honey yarn shop in northern Michigan. Michigan, Brooklyn Tweed Loft, honeycombs, and my current favorite color, rusty orange. Knit top down with a flattering cropped boxy silhouette. Who doesn't love that? Lots of people actually don't love that, but I You I know, that... that would look really good in um, the color that you just dyed up and had in your op- update oh today. What, that orange color that nobody's buying right now? <laughs> Is there still some left? <laughs> okay. Shop update just went live and it was beautiful and you got in it, things sold, but there was one color. The down trolley there. you yeah, went. Right, it's right down there by you. Okay. Go down there. I, everything was San Francisco inspired and there was this gorgeous orange color. You're welcome to check at the time that you're watching this. It may be you know available. Yes, it's this one. It's not going to be available because I'm going to buy it. Right now. <laughs> no, you're not. Um, well, you can. No, wait, this is not it. So this no. is, or this is a Merino from, this is no. a Lucky Strike. Okay. Off she goes to Where find it? it. It's the other orange one that looks similar to that. Just a little less. Well, anyway, there's, I'll pop a picture up. Beautiful orange color. And I kind of had a feeling that because it's like, orange is one of those ones where folks are like, I love the color, but I don't know if I love it on me or if I don't think I would wear it or whatever. Anyway, it kind of lingered in the shop a little longer. But I was eyeballing it. You were eyeballing it. (laughs) Who knows? Because I think it would look really pretty as that sweater. You want me to tell you if it's just, let's see if it's available. What international, no, it was Powell and Hyde. Yeah. Is it gone? <laughs> Bless Serves their hearts. Serves me right. Serves me right. Well, you know where to go because I, I keep a recipe. But I do think, though, 
that that is so pretty. And as soon as you said that made the, the little um, anecdote about our trip, I remember this because I remember you mentioning this Andrea Mowry pattern. Oh, it's so, That's like that color. Uh, it is. I might have a special project for you. Our birthdays are coming up. Yeah. April 15th. March 28th. The big 4-0, folks. Oh, boy. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Do you see the new coffee cups we got for the shop for the shop? I love those so much. And I still Merch like plug. I'm the worst shopper. Yeah. I love that because I love a good coffee mug. You yeah. go into our kitchen, I open yeah. and my mugs are just like the entire top shelf. You have like your own. And then yeah, I have my own shelf. And then yeah. we have our household's coffee mugs. Right. And are they the husband's. matching coffee mugs? Yeah, they're like the matching ones that come yeah. with the dish set. And then my husband <laughs> comes with the dish set. His, his mugs. And she has some. His mugs are the his like, are like Boeing International, like the company names. And no, I, he has like Chicago because we oh, did go to Chicago and I bought him a yeah. mug there. And then Yellowstone. He has That's one good. from Yellowstone. Dad mugs. Um, so dad mugs. Yeah. But they're cool. They're awesome mugs. Um, I always choose one of his his when we yeah. come visit you guys. Yeah. Because mine are too high. <laughs> She's really tall. How tall are you? I'm 5'8". She's 5'8". She's four inches taller than me. That's it. We were in, as we were like trying to get everything set up here, there's a point where I was thinking I needed to sit on a pillow. Because, okay. So, fun fact. Did you ever watch Lord of the Rings? Yes. Okay, so you know how Gandalf is tall, right? Yeah. And Frodo is supposed to look really little. Uh -huh. This is where I was, like, making all those Hobbit references. Well, in all the scenes where they have Elijah Wood and um, Ian McKellen together, they actually have this thing where, like, they're sitting, like, one is further oh, away yeah. than the other. So uh -huh. we kind of did this thing where Lauren's I'm actually sitting, sitting a little further back, back than I am. <laughs> So that our, that our heads <laughs> both fit in the frame. I know, it's a complete illusion. But if we were sitting right next to each other, it would be this little, like, uh-huh. Tiny me. <laughs> but it worked. Yeah. How cute is that? Ooh. That is a piglet? Oh, what? Yeah. Would you ever knit anything like that? No, you've knit. I have like knit. And I do really like. And that was, I made them the, um, what is it, Neela, the unicorn. And then there was like yes. a dragon as well that I made for my son. Um, and I made him the unicorn too, just without the horn. So oh, maybe he's had the horn. Um, I, I think I just made I, him the horse. I did it. You didn't um, do it. No, you did like color. He's like brown and, a mane, and a mane. Yeah. I've talked about like um, <clears throat> types of knitting that I wouldn't want to do that I kind of like not cringe at. I don't have any issue with the actual type of knitting. I just wouldn't want to take it on. And Amigurumi is one of those. I don't know if I could have the patience but then I see like that piglet or something that's of a substantial size mm -hmm. that I think one of the kids like my boys and I think your kids are into stuffies uh -huh. um that they would appreciate kind of causes me to sway towards you know knitting something like that I'd, I'd have to find something like that little piglet like that piglet that looked piglet. like a real animal it did real animal knitting you're gonna get you sweaters for you know cats or something Sweaters made of cat hair. <laughs> okay. Oh, look at the little seals. Oh, no, babies. So cute. Have you heard of, have you, I, this, okay, let's go down a different rabbit hole. Have you heard of people knitting with their cat or dog hair? I, sadly, I think I have. Sadly? I, I just, I don't know what that means. Like, so, how, okay, question. so how would you incorporate like the hair in. Are well, you, I think like, these are spinners. Spinning. So I think that these okay. are people that that will like, you know, golden retrievers. You can like yes. brush a golden yeah. retriever for 30 Endlessly. minutes and have like a second dog. Dog, uh, yeah. pretty much. I think they're taking that. And you, if you've done this before, chime in in the comments. But I think they're taking that and spinning it okay. into yarn. And then that they're makes using sense. that. So I feel like, I, I remember when I first heard I about this. I feel better this. about it now. I know. <laughs> Not like they're just knitting something like this and grabbing some hair. <laughs> like putting... No, there was a lady. There was a person. I, I think it was a lady that had made a comment on either here on the channel. And if you're watching, chime in. Or over on the Patreon. That she, I think it was on Patreon. That she was knitting and that she was, was she like working from the animal's like hair? Like just taking, I can't remember. Oh. But it like was like, it blew my mind a little bit. Yeah. Like how... And I, you know, you don't I mean, realize... it's a natural 
Pa- it's, a, it's, I mean, it's no different than doing it with sheep, a sheep yeah, or goats <laughs> or alpacas. I mean, these are barnyard yeah, animals. So yeah. I mean, if you think about it, it's different. It's not much different than that. Just a little Cats unconventional. Are, I mean, it's not hurting that's them. That's exactly right. It is just, just a unconventional. little unconventional. I don't but know I like if it. I would that, do it. I mean, it but... makes it kind of special to have something that, you know, you'll have that animal with yeah. you for, for years and years to come. <laughs> like in a sweater that you wear. Soft kitty, warm kitty, <laughs> the ball of fur. I don't know. It is, yeah, it is very unconventional. If you do, if you have done this, I would like to know more about this process. My necklace. Yeah, and like, like, are there different ways to do it? Like, would you spin it yes. into the yarn first, mm-hmm. or would you grab and go? Like grab and go. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Just like pull it in while you're working, right next to you. Yeah. Well, so when you spin yarn, it, they have like you can card the fleece or you can spin it uncarded, I believe. And then you get kind of a more, um, oh, goodness, the word is I'm, I'm blanking on it. But when you brush like your animal yeah. and then you take that stuff out of the brush, you can it's kind of like your It's already kind of matted in there. Yeah. You just spin it in. Oh, gosh. I could see this being you might a rabbit be hole for something. <laughs> I can see the grabbing, pepper coming out well. in the next spinning. <laughs> She'll see me pull the spinning wheel out. Oh, oh no. my gosh, pepper. On that note, on that very like unconventional, unconventional note and topic yeah. of conversation, we're going to go ahead and end it there. Um, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. I, I feel like such an honored, privileged oh, guest to be here and be on the channel. Mine. A hundred percent. I am so happy to have you here. And I told Lauren, I said that, Lauren, listen, maybe we need to make this a quarterly thing where you fly out to Vegas or even I go there and take the camera, <laughs> take the show on the yes. road and we record together. Because yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, come and yeah. film in California. Yes. That'd be a lot of fun. Bring all the stuff. I will yeah, take any cool. reason to have more often visits. Me too. But this was good. Thank you guys so much for joining us. If you enjoyed yourself or took any value from today's episode, please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Definitely subscribe and click that bell icon so that you can be notified anytime I upload new content, which is every Wednesday and every Sunday. And until we meet again for Wednesday's episode of the Midweek Ramble, happy knitting, happy making, happy whatever it is that you're doing. Take care, be well, and I will see you soon. Bye. This. I thought it was great. So we need to do a thumbnail. All right, so look right in there and we're gonna just...